Welcome to another Profiles in Leadership Real Conversations with real life business leaders out on the front lines like our friend Paul Martin joining us all the way from Regina, Saskatchewan. Paul has been uh, a chair with Tech Canada for uh, upwards of 20 years. He's also one of Saskatchewan's most uh, recognized business commentators. And Paul, thanks so much for coming on board, joining us for these conversations. And maybe that's a good place to start is uh, a little bit about uh, how this news of, you know, the, the news that's upended all of us, uh, where were you when it hit you the hardest and, and what was most significant right away? Yeah, I, it's one of those things where you keep hearing about it, and I suppose we've seen all the movies about contagion and all of these things. And I think this is one that caught people by surprise as just to how it could spread around the world. It was certainly, you know, it was in the headlines every day that COVID was around. And, uh, but I don't think people truly appreciated just the magnitude of the impact that it was going to have. And, and likely it was when, uh, when you see pro sports organizations start to drop schedules. Likely that NBA decision was probably where it all happened. And I, I actually wrote a piece, I do a radio commentary on about 15 radio stations in the province every day. And, and that was one that stuck with me. I actually put that out there and the, the headline on it was, uh, this crisis is putting the lead back in leader. And, uh, and what struck me about the NBA decision was somebody had the courage somewhere to make this call. And every other major pro sports organization followed suit instantly. It was like I had cover. But somebody had to be the first one to pull the trigger. And that was the leadership piece to me. And maybe the one that was the most poignant pivot point that said, holy smoke, something big is going on. And when you're the person in charge of making that decision, you run this risk of, Either I'm the total idiotist guy in the whole planet, or I am so far ahead of everybody. That is such a lonely spot. And you know, you talk with business leaders every day, so do I. But we talk a lot about that term of uh, lonely at the top. Well, this is the place where you actually saw it happening. And and just to remind myself of this, I went back and I, uh, I, I watched the movie uh, Darkest Hour a couple of nights ago. And you know, it was like pretty late at night when I decided to dial this thing up, but I just, I, I needed to do it. And, and this is one of my favorite movies. It's in my top three of uh, leadership movies, if I can put it that way. So, uh, and, and there is a scene in there that to me is the most poignant of the whole thing. And we remember Winston Churchill for the great speeches and the oratory and as his writer and the, you know, the, the woman who was his sort of speech writer, she helped him with the speeches. She said, no one strings words together like you do, sir. Well, that's what we remember him for. But what I remember, and maybe this was the magic of the movie, was he had reached his darkest hour where he had kind of lost the argument with his uh, war cabinet. And he was against negotiating with, uh, with Hitler to sue for peace. And the rest of the war cabinet was supporting it. And he kind of lost that battle and he was ready to throw in the towel. So in true Churchillian fashion, he got drunk and then was sleeping it off. And his wife came in and said, you know, you've got a visitor. The king is here. And the king came in and said, Winston, but I believe in you. And I thought, man, if there was ever a more poignant opportunity to see the role and power and magnitude of a leader, and a mentor, mentors are so powerful in this. And, and so much people are scared right now. There's a lot of uncertainty in leaders of small businesses, medium-sized businesses, they're all trying to figure out, I wanna make the right decision, I wanna do what's right, but I don't know what that is. And I'm almost paralyzed to pull the trigger. And that movie can inspire you to go and take a look and say, deep down inside, it's there. You know the answer. Churchill knew the answer. He just didn't know how to convince everyone around him. The king gave him that inspiration to be able to go and sell the story to the rest of the people around him and the, the whole country and ultimately the democratic Western world rallied behind that one line. Paul, um, you've just given us the theme. Every day we do one of these conversations, we want to have a one word theme that really identifies what's this particular chat all about. And the theme that you've helped us select is decisiveness. Yeah. So in the spirit of decisiveness, tell us a little bit about what you are doing now on a practical level in terms of 
the leaders that you're responsible for. As a Tech Canada chair, you have, I don't know, upwards of what, 50 companies or so looking yeah. to you for guidance. So what are you doing now practically? Well, one of the things that, uh, that I can do is, uh, you know, my background actually, I grew up as a journalist. So it's still about tracking the story and gathering data. Uh, most of the leaders of the companies that you and I deal with, they're busy doing what they've got to be doing. And so if I can assemble a lot of, here's some brief summaries of all the announcements that the federal government, the provincial government have made about support for business. I put it all in one little spot and send it out to them. And so we did that yesterday. And, you know, thankfully there are lots of organizations providing support. I have a tech member who has an accounting of uh, firm and and she and her team had gone through it so she actually assembled it for me so what is i just the reporter and all of this i took that and shared it with the other members and and i'm taking a cue from uh you know because we, we don't really invent a lot of stuff there's very few people that invent so steal with passion and get those great ideas andre turcott in quebec has come up with a brilliant uh, idea of uh, because we meet as tech chairs or tech groups once a month he said, what if we meet for a shorter period of time every week? And so I'm sampling my members with that. And I think probably next week, we're probably going to start doing it. Not maybe with all the groups, but certainly with, uh, with a couple of them have said, yeah, this is uh, a time when we join a tech group because we look for the wisdom of the table from all those other CEOs that sit next to us. We need to access them more frequently than once a month right now. This is the time we need to be able to tap into it. And what can I do? I can be the organizer of that. Mm. And, and so, and for anyone watching right now, Tech Canada that Paul is part of, uh, Vistage International in the U.S., these are CEO peer advisory groups where all the folks who are lonely at the top have a chance to get together. Paul, you're going to do more things virtually. I'm just curious, in what's now becoming um, kind of our own shared version of Groundhog Day, are you adopting... <laughs> Are you and Marsha like adopting any new habits? Yeah, well, we've uh, we've done the uh, the self-imposed uh, isolation thing. Uh, so we haven't been out really uh, since um, uh, Sunday. So uh, we're in like day four or five, and uh, you know, I, I'm just amazed at the stuff that I'm, people were talking to. Like they are going back to things they've been wanting to do for a long, long time, and actually getting them done. So. Right now, that uh, lovely lady that I live with is cleaning drawers and going through all of, you know, it's a purge that's going on around here. So my assignment really is to move the boxes of stuff out to the recycle bin. But she was talking with one of her friends last night who cracked out the sewing machine. And, uh, you know, she, she had done that probably since she was a teenager or in her early 20s or something. And, and always thought I should get back to, to sewing some clothes. So she's going to do that. I think there's a lot of us are going to do this. You know, we're going to go back to some things. I actually might even, uh, you know, dust off the piano and uh, see if there's some noise that can be made in there. And, and so we're trying some stuff. I think that this is a, it's kind of an empty dance card. You know, we've never been to one of these before. And if you're like me, Gary, you're sitting here and you're thinking, I uh, usually have a lot of energy. I'm trying to figure out what I should do to fill my day. And if I don't find something done in the last hour, it's sort of like, did I just blow that? Just waste that? Hour? I mean, we're all struggling to figure this out. So I would just say back to that comment earlier, it's, it's in here somewhere deep inside, you know, just dig in there and actually, you know, maybe go back to some stuff you haven't touched for a while. It, it probably is going to be kind of rewarding and fulfilling. So as we wrap up this segment, and in the spirit of our theme today, which is decisiveness. Yeah. And when you think about all those business leaders that you know that primarily are responsible for, you know, taking care of their employees and by extension, their employees' families, what would you advise, you know, what do you have in terms of advice or wisdom that you could share with other leaders watching this? Yeah, I wrote a piece, uh, one of my commentaries this week on, uh, uh, just said somewhere out there, there's a bottom. And it really was about the stock market. And we're watching this thing drop and drop and drop. Well, there is a bottom somewhere and, and we will find it. And so to that extent, don't lose the faith, if I can say that. Believe in yourself and be decisive about what you're, not necessarily decision making, but be decisive about your own ability. You got to be a leader for a reason. Well, don't forget that reason and that you are very capable. Just remind yourself to eh, 
give yourself a little credit and believe in yourself. Paul Martin, uh, joining us from Regina, Saskatchewan, Tech Canada. Thanks so much for joining us here on uh, Profiles and Leadership. Not at all. Thanks for, uh, thanks for reaching out. All the best to you.